And just a warning, I might say something offensive because I figure, you know what? I'm going to go all out on it. Ancestry and living DNA, not providing a chromosome browser is a travesty on their part. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics. And I've got a treat for you today. Why doesn't Ancestry provide a chromosome browser? Before I can answer why Ancestry and Living DNA don't provide a chromosome browser, I must refer back to my previous video about the importance of chromosome browsers. The video is linked below. Genealogists should be using a chromosome browser. In other words, they should be looking at the original record of matches. It's that simple. That is why a chromosome browser is important. It is the original record of matches. It contains the most data about that match. The index is just a condensed portion of that information. And so when I'm talking about ancestry and living DNA, not providing a chromosome browser, I think it is a travesty on their part, particularly if they're saying that they provide a comprehensive set of tools. Let me give you an example. I like to build stuff. And so I have a lot of tools. If you go down to my garage, what you will find is I've got a miter saw. I've got a table saw. I've got a jigsaw, a circular saw, a tile cutting saw, a drywall saw, a hand saw, a bow saw. And that's not even going into knives, which are also cutting things. Now, if you ask me, well, which saw do you use the most? That's real easy. The miter saw. Probably 50% of the time that I'm using a saw, it's the miter saw. Well, what about the next most? Well, that's probably the table saw. Between the miter saw and the table saw, that's 90% of all the cutting that I do. With all these different saws. is with this, just those two saws. And yet, I still have all of these other saws. Now, they each have a particular purpose. And they each happen to do things really well. The miter saw and the table saw are extremely versatile and they might be able to do most of the things that I want to do. But in a lot of cases, the jigsaw will do it better, faster, and safer. So why not use the jigsaw? Pull it out at that time and use the tool that is designed for that specific purpose. If a company, let's say Craftsman or Ryobi or Makita or Stanley, wanted to advertise that they provide a comprehensive set of saws for your, you know, building needs. And all they provided was a table saw and a miter saw. I would really question their marketing because while you don't necessarily need a jigsaw, there's some things that it's really useful for. Same with a bandsaw. You can do a lot of things on a bandsaw on a table saw, but the bandsaw does them a lot better, a lot faster, a lot safer. So if your company is not providing those other tools, even though they may be infrequently used, even though you may have a particular saw that has one real purpose, like for instance, a drywall saw, that's all it's used for is for cutting drywall. Can you use it to cut other things? You could. It doesn't do it very well. It's not designed for it. It's not going to last very long doing it. But do all these other saws cut drywall? No, the drywall saw cuts drywall a whole lot better than all the other saws. So if you were a company and you said, we provide a comprehensive set of tools for your building needs and you just provided a miter saw and a table saw, even though that covers 90% of all of the tasks you're going to need to do, I would tell you that is not true. That company is not providing a comprehensive set of tools because you haven't provided these other tools that have specific purposes, but when you need them, it's better to have them. And that is where I look at chromosome browsers. They are a specialty tool, just like original records are a specialty tool. As genealogists, if we are supposed to be looking at the original records whenever possible, then we need a chromosome browser. If a company wants to say that they provide a comprehensive set of tools and they don't provide a chromosome browser, even though it is not used for the vast majority of your genealogy questions, they are not providing a comprehensive tool. And so Ancestry does not provide a comprehensive set of tools. They provide more matches than anybody else because they have the largest database size. And you can do a lot with that. Referring back to that previous video, 
I explained four things a chromosome browser does that you can't do with just a match list. But you can't do those four things I just told you about if all you have is ancestry data. Living DNA, same thing. Now, Living DNA is such a small company right now that it probably doesn't make a difference. But I think that they should go and get a chromosome browser now anyway and be able to have that tool for their customers. Now, people have asked me lots, when is Ancestry going to get a chromosome browser? And for several years, I was always saying, I don't think they will. They've expressed certain issues regarding privacy or whatever that I don't think they're going to ever have a chromosome browser. That has changed. My opinion on that has changed right now. If you'll notice in the last year, Ancestry has released a new tool with the side view where they're actually showing at least the ethnicity data within a chromosome painter. Now, I did the review before and it is still in beta. It is still being developed. Hopefully it will improve. But that's certainly a first step in getting to a chromosome browser where we're actually seeing segment data. My wife had a conversation with some people at Ancestry and mentioned the chromosome browser issue as well and talked with them at length. And there was some feedback that was encouraging. Now, has Ancestry announced a chromosome browser? No, they haven't. Have they made hints that they're going to have a chromosome browser? No, they haven't. Do I think they need one? Do they need one? No, you don't need anything. But what I think it does is it relegates Ancestry from a genealogical perspective. You are now just looking at an index of your match data. You are not looking at the original records. With my heritage, with family tree DNA, with 23andMe, which doesn't even profess to be a, gen a genealogy company, you are able to look at the original match records through their chromosome browsers. And so if Ancestry wants to solidify their place as the predominant genetic genealogy company, get a chromosome browser. Get one that's good, that's awesome. If you ask me which company has the best chromosome browser, it's GEDmatch by far. No competition there. Uh, 23andMe comes in a distant second, um, followed by MyHeritage. And MyHeritage and Family Tree DNA are about on par as far as a chromosome browser. So if you wanted to emulate what the best chromosome browser and then the tools attached to that are, follow GEDmatch. So Ancestry, this is really going out to you. You want to be the best company? Get a chromosome browser. Hope you like that little rant. I've been meaning to do that for a while. If you want to see how you can look at different matches in a chromosome browser, then you can watch this video up here. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Tell us what you think about chromosome browsers in the comments below.